Villarreal, a club esteemed in a rich history with plenty of footballing stars from the past, present and future, including that man Giuseppe Rossi, known as a legend by many in the last couple of years. Diego Forlan, a name that needs no further introduction, and also the most recent of the legends, Santi Cazola. It really has provided plenty of incredible names over the last couple of years, and now there's some new names to go onto that list, including the likes of Paco Alcacer and one of their new recent top scorers, Gerard Moreno. Well, things are going a little bit bad right now at Villarreal, and somebody's going to have to take charge and get in there and really help this club to get back to their very best. Is it going to be me? We'll have to find out. Hello and welcome along to the second episode of the Football Manager 2021 beta save with Villarreal, of course the Yellow Submarine. If you are new to the channel as always do leave a like and a subscription if you have enjoyed the episode so far and of course as always in the chat put in your plays you'd like to see me sign in this save so far. So the last time that you joined us on the first episode of the series of course we had an introduction to the squad, we talked you through the team, the tactics and the systems that we're going to use and we also of course played our first friendly game uh, which was against the second XI which the first team actually lost which is quite embarrassing to be honest but the second team doing very well indeed in that game but I've gone a little bit forward in this save of course as we try and edge closer towards the beginning of the season um, of course as you can see on the screen right now the first game uh, that we played in the first official friendly that wasn't against our side was against Mirandes it was a 1-0 win in this match uh, which was very good to see of course um, I think Moi Gomez get the only goal in that game. I nearly said Maxi there. We haven't got Maxi at the club. And then we had the other game, of course, against Sporting Gijon as well. A 2-0 win in that match just a moment ago. Although, you might be able to see on your screen, we do have a very serious problem before we've even started the season off. That's right. Gerard Moreno is out for eight to nine months. Now, it's going to be absolutely unfortunate for us um it's come at the worst possible time we've not even started the season yet and we already are down one big player uh, of course moreno being the uh, ever present striker in the side um so it kind of slightly changes up how we're going to work out this window because we've pretty much lost gerald moreno for the entirety of this season uh, and otherwise we have paco alcacer and Carlos Baca. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go forward for now. Uh, I'm going to look now for a new striker, which is very unfortunate indeed, but I'm going to have to bring someone in now at this stage uh, because as much as Carlos Baca is a decent striker and Paco is fairly good, I'd like to get another striker in just in case of injuries. So I'm going to go into the transfer uh, into the transfer market, of course, try and get somebody, and then I'll come back and I'll talk to you about some of the transfers that we've completed already in this window. With this episode getting off to the worst possible start, it means, as I said, that I've had to change up my tactics for this window. Window. Of course, originally I was looking to try and get a midfielder and a left winger in. I feel like I could still do that. However, I now need to get a striker. Um, so there's kind of a few strikers I'm looking at on the table right now to obviously come into the side. So Paco will probably be the starting player. This player will probably be a bench player. If not, of course, because we've got European football, rotation is crucial. First player I'm looking at is Loren of Real Betis. I mean, he looks like a, a fairly decent player on the game. Uh, he plays the advance forward, which is what Gerard Moreno was going to be playing anyway. And I can get him in for fairly cheap. I think he comes in for around £6 million, which isn't too bad for a 26-year-old who could still improve over the next couple of years and hit his prime. Uh, another player I'm looking at, a little bit more expensive, Gian Pedro of Cagliari. Looks like a great player, could play as a cam if we needed him to, so he could kind of cover both bases. Um, so we're looking at a few different strikers, of course, uh, but there is going to be one outgoing here, Alfonso Pedraza. Uh, now, he technically could play as a left back all the way up to left winger, very versatile indeed. However, looking at his stats across the board, I don't think I necessarily need him at this stage. You know, he's only 24. I guess he'd probably still be fairly useful at some point. Uh, but Leon came in, £7 million. Pounds. I'm going to take the money. I need to get a little bit extra money in right now, of course, to cover a few of the extra transfers. I am getting a left winger, fingers crossed. But as for now, our first deal of the window is going to be an outgoing. Alfonso Pedraza goes to Leon for £7 million. Pounds. Okay, so here we are. This is going to be the first transfer of the season. Now, you're probably looking at the screen and thinking, what the hell are you doing? 30-year-old Alexandra Pato. Now, the reason why I'm going to do this deal is because 
Uh, as you can see on the screen, he only wants 25 grand a week. He's still only 30 years old, so you know we could still get one or two years out of him if needed. It's a free deal, most importantly. Um, not necessarily probably going to be the most amazing player on the game in the world. Let's be real, Pato's never kind of lived up to the hype of what was expected of me over the couple of years. And as well, uh, another thing, of course, he is a former Villarreal player. Didn't necessarily do well at the club, only got two goals in 14 games. Uh, he's been all over the place, obviously, since that point, being at Chelsea and, and in China. But when you look at him, he can play as a striker and as a left winger. Now, he's not going to be that striker uh, that I'm bringing in necessarily to be the backup. I'm bringing him in more to be the, the left winger, of course. A bit of a makeshift one for now, although we can go out there and still get somebody in the window, which there's one player... I'm going to look at in a moment and show you which I'm thinking about going for. Uh, but Alexandra Pato is going to come in for now. That's the first deal of the window completed. We're only spending 245 grand as of current. He's three star rated. And I think for now, it's a fantastic deal to bring someone in in the short term to play as the left winger, of course. Could also play as the striker if we need him to. Now, the other player I was talking about essentially that main left winger to bring in, uh, is Ruben Garcia. Now, he's at Atletico Pamplona, of course, which is, I believe, Osasuna in real life. Um, so when you look at him, of course, very good player across the board, can play as a cam, can play as a left winger, and as a right winger as well. So very versatile indeed. Good stats across the board, great vision, great passing and technique, good finishing. Not the quickest of players in the world, but he could still do a fairly decent job. He's valued at 12 million right now, but you can get him on a minimum release clause, which they've just upped. That is incredibly frustrating because earlier, I believe it was 9.5 million um, to be able to get him. So they've upped it. So I'm looking at him potentially still as an idea to go for in the future. Uh, but as for now, we've got our first deal done. Alexandra Pato comes into the club on a free. Been in the show, as always, do put in the chat uh, any players that you think we should go out there and sign. But as for now, Pato is signing number one. And we have another deal through the door. Well, as I said, I wanted to bring in another striker after Gerard Moreno, of course, uh, had that nine-month injury, which means he's not going to be available for pretty much the entirety of the season. We might be lucky if we get one game out of him this season, but we have our man, Loren. Now, I was looking a moment ago. We did talk to Giao Pedro, whose offer was accepted. However, he didn't want to join us because we're not a Champions League club, of course. He wants Champions League football. But Loren, he wants to join us, £3.2 million, which I have to say is not a bad deal at all in the respect of things, of course. We've got a fairly modest budget. We don't want to try and overspend on one player because we've got to try and bring in a, uh, you know, bring in a few positions over this transfer window. But he comes through the door. As I say, going to play as the backup striker. Sometimes he's going to start, but he comes in as Raul Albiol gets injured for a day. But 26-year-old Loren from Real Hispalis to slash Real Batiste, of course, is our next signing through the door. We could have a third coming in shortly. Just to say as well, apologies if you've experienced any lag with the camera. I think I might have sorted it. I never realised there was any kind of severe lag, but I think I've sorted it. But, back to what we talked about earlier, we may have a third signing through the door. And well, here we are once again. We're continuing on this Spanish contingency of players coming through the door. And I'd like to welcome into the club Gonzalo Molera. What a great deal this one is. 3.5 million, uh, about 1.1 up front now with the rest of it coming uh, across the year of course I'm trying to make sure that we have a little bit of cash left over for the January window and things like that just in case we're not going to spend all of the uh, 10 million remaining left uh, in this window but what a great signing this is he was transfer listed uh, I was able to get him um, before Brighton Leeds and Wolves came in for him I mean you look across the board I asked for another midfielder to come into the club uh, just to make sure we've got enough squad depth across the board. And, well, he's a great player across the board. Really good finishing, decent tackling, uh, good teamwork and work rates. He's not really got any bad stats apart from, I guess you could say, long throws uh, as his worst stat on um, in terms of his uh, technical stats and across the board. But for 3.5 million altogether across the next year, fantastic deal. He's got a minimum, re uh, minimum fee release clause of 10 million, which I don't like. So if we have to time up to a new contract at some point, just to cancel that out, then that's no problem at all. But that's another deal through the door. Uh, a few players a bit unsure in terms of what he can offer. Uh, well, more fans' uh, reaction more than anything. But as you can see, the squad 
uh, has been updated. So Gerald Moreno has come out for now. Of course, we're not going to see uh, any of him this season. We've also brought in uh, our new signings, including Pato in there, as alongside Malera, which I am just going to put into that squad update now. Uh, but pretty much we're going to move on. Um, I think in terms of deals for now, unless something... Uh, major pops up. I'm going to have to quickly um, move the budget slightly. Unless something major pops up, I think the only other position I'd like to improve is either a better left winger, so we've got depth across the board, although I am, as I said, training up Kubo to become uh, a left winger, which is going to take a little bit of time to do. We're going to play him on the left and keep hopefully improving him uh, as we go along, but um, otherwise, I'd like to bring in a better left winger, and if possible, a better left back, although Alberto Moreno will do a good job for now. But as we said before in our first episode, our first game is against Valley Delete. If there's any more transfers to be done over the next two weeks, I'll update you. But uh, if not, let's go forward to the game. It looks like the business is going to continue at the club. Um, I've had a look at the team, of course. Um, something that's so important in the first year of any save is that you've got enough squad depth specifically if you're playing in continental competitions like the Euro Cup, of course, which is what the Villarreal side is in because it's a very hectic first season, of course. So I've had a look at the team, analysed it, and I think the one position that needed a bit of an upgrade in terms of squad depth was the right wing because we've got Chukweze and we've got Ruben Pena. Now, when you look at Pena, he's not necessarily the greatest player in the world to play as a right winger. You know, he's decent depth anyway. So there are two options on the table. Uh, one of them is Eduardo Salvia, who is, of course, 30 years old, previously in Spain, played for Atletico Madrid a couple of years ago. Decent little player. The other player on the table is Osama Idrissi. Just recently signed in real life for Sevilla. We could bring him in on a two-year loan, or we could pay the 2.8 million up front now with the rest of the 6 million fee uh, paid later on for Salvio. Now, I've already started in my head here. I'll go for Osama Idrissi. Two-year loan deal. I think it's the best option on the table, uh, purely because he's, one, a little bit younger, um, and two, I just think... When you actually look at it in terms of the actual deal itself, he could play as a left winger and as a right winger. So what I will do is I'll train him up a bit more as a right winger so he gets a little bit higher rated in terms of his actual stats. Um, and of course, we have another player through the door. So Adrissi is our fourth signing of the season. This one is a two-year loan deal, and I think it's a very good deal indeed for squad depth. So here we are. This is it. This is the first game of the La Liga season, and we might have... One more deal to do, potentially at some point, which I'll talk about a little bit later on uh, towards the end of this episode, I think. Uh, we're going to try and get in one game, of course. We're going to play Valia de Lead in the league. This is how the team is going to be set up for this game. Uh, so starting in goal is Asensio. Back four, Moreno, Torres, Raul Albi, Mario Gaspar. Uh, midfield three of Coquelin as the CDM, Parejo and... Our new signing, of course, Gonzalo Malero in the midfield. Left wing is Alexandra Pato, another one of our new signings. Right wing is Chukweze. And up top is Alcacer, of course. We're missing Gerald Moreno because of injury. Uh, and then, of course, we have our new signings on the bench. Apart from Idrissi, he's out with a three-week injury, which he initially had before he joined the club. Um, so, of course, we won't be seeing him play today in this match. But without further ado, let's get into our first game in La Liga this season. Incredibly excited to see what goes on in this match, of course. Um, first time we played with the full team uh, in this save so far. And, well, it should be a good game of football. I've got it, I think, on positive. So, fingers crossed the boys can go out there and get a result. Going to work the ball into the box. Um, and let's see what happens here against Valia de Lead. Of course, a side you would expect to be at the lower end of the table this season. But you can already see Atletico Madrid running right against Celta Vigo in their game. But I think the projection this season is to try and get into that top six get a European spot, most importantly. I think that's the pivotal part uh, of this save. But so far, we're about 20 minutes in and nothing's happened in this game, which is not exactly what you want to see. Of course, um, we tried initially our attacking tactic in our first game against uh, Villarreal's second XI bench players, and it kind of worked to a certain extent. But so far, we've had nothing in this match to really scream and shout about. And well, what I'm going to do for the sake of this for now is just put it onto 2D mode. And the reason why I'm going to do that is just in case we do get any lag, uh, which I think could happen at some point. So first chance here for Valerie de Lee to come forward. Alcaraz lays the ball off to Perez on the right wing. Some good football here. And though Alberto Moreno might have just given away a penalty, which the referee is going to go over to VAR here. Not the start we want in our first La Liga game. And of course, we're going to see what VAR gives here. Big moment in this match, 35 minutes on the clock. The referee doesn't give a penalty, so uh, kind of let off there. And 
it comes back to the point what I was saying at the beginning. I, I don't know whether I really trust Alberto Moreno, although we can trust Paco Alcacer because it is 1-0 to Villarreal. And just as before, we were about to give away a penalty. We go up the other end with a set piece and we score. And it was the new signing Malera there, of course, who hit the post on the left-hand side of the pitch. But Alcacer is there to tap it away. And we're 1-0 up after 40 minutes on the clock. And we could have a chance here to make it 2-0. Chuck Weze coming down the right-hand side. He's going to move into the middle towards Paco. Lovely ball from Alexandra Pato to Chuck Weze. And it's 2-0. What? Two goals in about two minutes. And it was Alexandra Pato there on his La Liga debut this season. Of course, already played in La Liga, technically. With a lovely ball to Chuck Weze, who gets into that space. That's opened, for, uh, opened up for him inside of the box. And it's 2-0 at half-time in this fixture. It looks like it's going to end. Which it does indeed. And what a start to the La Liga season. Fantastic from the boys. Certainly have to be very pleased with that first 45 minutes of action. Uh, of course, Paco Alcacer on the score sheet. As well as uh, Alexandra Pat to get an assist in the game. So very good start indeed. And what I was talking about earlier, of course, with a lot of the signings. Is that you do have to go out there in a save like this. And go and try and sign a couple of extra plays for squad depth. And of course, you'll notice if you are new to Football Manager. Or you've played it in the past. As we get a free kick here. Which is inside of the box, uh, sorry, outside of the box and into the back of the net. And it's Danny Parejo. It's 3-0 against Valle de Lead. And it's the man on his La Liga debut for Villarreal who smashes a lovely free kick into the back of the net. And you could pretty much say that this game is done and dusted after 60 minutes. But um, going back to the point I was initially making before, um, it's so crucial to have squad depth this season because there's a constant turnover of matches. You know, you're playing games every three to four days pretty much. Um, so a team like Villarreal is going to need plenty of players as Chuck Weze comes towards the box and very nearly scores his second goal of the game and very nearly 4-0 up in this match. And I was going to make a change, but Parejo is going to whip in a free kick here, which doesn't come to anyone in the end and eventually Pau Torres is offside. So what I'm going to do early on in this game is I'm going to make a few changes now. Um, of course, we're trying to teach Kubo to become a left winger, so we are going to play him as a left winger for now and take a gamble here and see if that works we're also going to take off Francis Coquelin uh, and I think we're going to bring on Manu Trigueros and we'll play a flat free midfield now which um, of course will change him from being a ball winning player to a deep line playmaker so that's uh, another player on and then what we'll also do is we'll take Raul Albiol off we'll bring on Juan, uh, Juan Foy for his debut so a few changes with 25 minutes left here currently free and up against Valle de Lead. what a fantastic start to the season and of course as I said before if there's any other last minute signs you can think of uh, that we should sign for the club then definitely do tell me in the chat because uh, it'd be nice to see a few more players and of course as I said at the beginning of this uh, episode we might have one more deal that could be done and if we can get this man into the club on a loan then my lord he's a very very good player that shouldn't be on the loan list but he is and hopefully he's interested in joining the club. But I think we've got enough um, to make enough substitutes to make one more change. We are going to bring Ruben Pena on as a winger uh, for now. We'll rest some players up as Valley Dilly come forward here. It's Shona Weissman into Roque Mesa. A very poor ball indeed, which Kubo is just going to clear away. And a fantastic game of football indeed. As we've got four minutes left on the clock here. It's Shona Weissman into Roque Mesa who takes the long range effort. But goes high and wide as they come forward once again here good clearance away from Danny Parejo a little bit of pressure now from the home side as they try to get a goal back in this game which they do and well he's been knocking on the door on his debut for Valle de Lead and it's Roque Mesa who does get a goal back in this game and unfortunately we're not going to get a clean sheet as they come forward again here and Bruno he's put it in the back of the net and well I should have probably calmed this down a little bit earlier because it's 3-2 six minutes left on the clock here and maybe staying a bit positive in this match wasn't a good idea. Four minutes left on the clock. Can we hold on? Or are we going to bottle it? The answer is we're not going to bottle it. It's a big victory to start off the season. But I really shouldn't have conceded two goals there. And I will put my hands up and say that was my fault for leaving the side on positive. Uh, but 3-2 victory against Valle de Lead. A fantastic start to the season. It puts us into third place, and if we can have performances like that across the season, who knows where we're going to finish. I think that victory is the perfect way to end the episode. I thought we might get a little bit of news about the signing that I was going to make. 
However, nothing has come in yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave that for the next episode where I will kind of have a look and hopefully we might be talking about another really, really good signing potentially coming into the club to reassure our defence. That's all I'm going to give away for now. But um, what a fantastic way to end the uh, video, of course. Very disappointing start in the fact that we did lose Gerard Moreno to a serious injury. But in the end, we got a big victory against Valladolid, even if it was my fault that I left ourselves attacking until the last 10 minutes. But in our next episode, it's going to be big indeed. I think we're going to do two games in that episode. Uh, Atletico Madrid, what a game this is going to be. A big chance for us to really mark... Uh, ourselves down in La Liga this season and then we'll also try and get Hoesker in we should have the end of the transfer window potentially coming up soon um, so plenty of action to come uh, so if you have enjoyed the video as always do leave a like a subscription it is very greatly appreciated as we push towards 1,300 subscribers as for now though have a great rest of your morning afternoon evening wherever you are and we hope to see you again soon goodbye